read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners welcome back welcome back it's a brand new week at read me romance and we have Kateri with breaking the beat I'm super excited. It's a rock star romance. Me too. We I haven't have, done that in a hot minute. I know. I haven't I think I've read one in a while. It's been forever. So we're super excited to have her with us. We're going to talk about everything she's got in just a little bit. And she's got a ton of great stuff. One of the things that she mentioned, I actually do want to talk about on the podcast today. She mentioned in her um, notes that she sent to us. So we don't forget to, to tell you all the good stuff. One of the things she asked to mention is that she's hosting a, um, a book signing. So she's helping hosting it. It's in New Orleans. And let me see. I can pull it up right here. It says that she's planned a book signing event in New Orleans called Hot and Steamy New Orleans. It's September 29th and 30th of this year. Um, they've got some really fun events planned from what it looked like on the author page. I went and checked it out. Um, you can find it. The website is hot and steamy events.com, which is perfect because you can Google that. And there you <laughs> go. Uh, one of the things she had on there is Friday night. There's coffee and beignets with authors, followed by a scavenger hunt of the French Quarter with readers and authors. Damn. Which is really cute. And Saturday is an all day book signing, followed by a voodoo bayou costume after party. Um, they're still filling tables if you're an author and you're interested. Go check it out. You can be at the signing if you want to. Damn, I thought that sounded, sounded really fun. Yeah, that sounded really different and fun. I saw that there's one coming to Anaheim, actually, too. Um, I looked it up the other day because somebody asked me. They were like, would you guys come to California and sign? And I was like, I don't know. But we, I was like, there's hardly ever a signing on the West Coast. I know. I was just thinking mm -hmm. that. I was like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I think the furthest we've gone over is like, Texas. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah. I don't know if we've ever done one out West, but it's called, um, steamy lit com, steamy lit con, sorry, like con, like conference. Um, it's in Anaheim, California. It's August 18th, 18th through the 19th. So, um, that one is at steamy lit con.com. And they actually have like a steamy lit book box. If you follow them on Instagram, they have really good stuff on there. And the, I love it because the author list is really, really good. I mean, oh, there's yeah. a ton of our friends are going. <laughs> when I saw the list on there, I was like, what the hell? Jenica's going. She didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of cool that there that that's going on. And it's in Anaheim, too, which is right next to Disneyland. So, oh. I mean, if you need an excuse to go. There you go. But one of my friends that lives in um, San Diego that's right near there. She was messaging about something. I was like, oh, you know, there's a romance book on. And she was like, what? Are you going to come? She was like, let's just go together as readers. And I was like, that's my favorite way to go to a book signing. It's my a favorite reader. way to go, too. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, if you look at the, the author's attending list, it's really, really good. So that was what I wanted to mention as well. And then um, there's there's a ton of book signings happening that I know about. But there's not like one central place. To find out about it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, like a website that lists all of the signings. I feel like that was a thing at one time. Yeah, I think it used to be. A long time ago, there was like a random website that would just post them up. But it's almost like you're going to have to find a book blogger or something like that. That yeah. lists up where they're going to go. Um, one of the ladies I follow, that's a book blogger, um, Lo. She's the well-read nurse. And I've talked about on her here on her before, but um, uh, on her thing the other day, it said she has like where I'm going to be. She posted on her Instagram and she listed the signing she was going to be attending. And I was like, that's actually kind of cool, too. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to go to a book sign, you would at least know one person that was going to be there, you know. Yeah. My mom had talked about going to one that's in, um, I think it's Chicago. I and it's Chicago. coming up like it's. Yeah, it's pretty soon. Like, it's in the next couple of weeks. But she didn't have anybody to go with. And um, originally, I told her I'd go with her. 
but I want because Mariana Zapata was going to be there. And I was like, yes, 100 percent. I'll go. And then um, there was a couple of our, uh, other authors she wanted to see. There was like JT Geisinger, I think mm -hmm. was the other one. And they dropped out at the oh, last minute. Two big ones to drop out. I know. Well, the Mariana Zapata, I was like, that's the only person I would that I'm going for. And if she's G not going, I'm not going to go. The GT one, she's really blown up over the last few years. Yeah. I think that's like one of my mom's favorites. And I think she really wanted to go. But I don't think she, I don't know if she's still planning on doing it or not. But I told her, I was like, there was really nobody else there that, I hadn't seen before or that I was like, I have to get a signed book by them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was, you know, when I want to go to a book signing, it's like, I'd like to know a lot of the people that are going to be there. Cause then it's fun and you feel like you get to hang out with your friends and catch up and stuff. And I knew a lot of the authors that were going, but I didn't, they weren't like close friends. Yeah. And you know, there were like more acquaintances that I've known or I've messaged online and that kind of thing. And I'm like, I would really just be going to say, Oh, Hey, it's good to see you. Like I wouldn't be getting signed books or anything, but like Mariana Zapata, I'd wait in her line all day. <laughs> just be like, <laughs> this is where I'm at. <laughs> so, but, um, there was that one she was playing, she had told me about, and there's, um, there's, a, there was just one this past weekend in Nashville, but yeah, I wish there was like a central, place to put like hey if you have a book signing list it here you know because even the big ones you know people will ask me like oh what's uh what's a good book signing to go to if you've never been to one it would be an easy one to put on our website it's just i would have to people would have to tell me about them exactly it's that's what i'm saying like how would you even like i can find i can totally host that easily on the website on a page yeah. that would be something and i would just literally add it almost like you add a new release but I yeah. have to have somebody telling me when they are. Okay. Well, looks like we got to make a page now, Melissa. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you make I, I a think page. it would be easy, but somebody's got to give me a list. Okay. You hear that, lady listeners? This is your call to action. If you have a, if you know of a book signing, whenever, wherever, email us, readmeromance at gmail.com. Just message, you can message us on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Message us and tell us when and where your book sign is, and we'll put it on there. Okay? Yep. There you go. We'll be the place. We're going to be the place that does this. Because I think it would be, you know, it would be fun. Like, I was telling my mom, I was like, you should go. If the that one doesn't work out, you should go to a Polycon. I said, it's hard to get tickets, but there will be tickets. If you go in the Facebook group, a week before the signing, everybody's unloading tickets. Yeah. So I was like, just go in there. You have to just be able, you have to be prepared that you're going to go last minute and be like, yeah. okay, you know, like a week before the sign, you're going to have to plan to go to DC. But if you have the ability to do it, do it because that's an awesome signing. It's really well put together. There are a fuck ton of authors. There's lots of events that are going on. There's a lot of people. Like it's a good time, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's that's a good one. There's also Book Bonanza that's in Texas, and then, which is another huge one that's put on. There's tons of people that go. Tickets sell out really fast, but again, like a week or two before the event, there's always people trying to get rid of tickets. Yeah. Um, there's, I think the one that I just had in Tennessee was, like, the something of the Bells. Yes. Like the, Bell, the Bells, Texas. I actually or, think or they host a few, now that you Nashville said that. Nashville Bells or something. Yeah. I think you're right. I think there's like a Bells in Texas, isn't there? Yeah, I feel like they do. Fuck, a few. I can't remember. A, a lot of things have changed since COVID. Yeah, it feels yeah. like. Mm -hmm. So there's one that's they're still doing. Um, I think they still have Shameless. Somebody that's told me the that one I wasn't sure if they had anymore. Somebody said I think they're going to Shameless. They have oh. Love in Vegas is still happening. I'm like, what? What? That's still going on. No, I, I had no idea that was still going on. And then one of my author friends was like, hey, are you going to be at Love in Vegas? I was like, is this 2003? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening now? <laughs> that's not right. It's 2013. I should be. I should be no better. But yeah. But that's wild, right? <laughs> like, but yeah, I thought that was funny. I, I had another um, an age thing that got me today. We were at um, Girl Scouts, and our troop leader, her daughter's older now, but they still get American Girl magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, the American Girl dolls or whatever. Yeah. How about, look, I have it right here because my, my youngest one was looking through it, and she was like, this is a cute doll. I said, look at the price. <laughs> Don't talk to me. This freaking doll is like $130. They're expensive. They're crazy expensive. I don't know if I can. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is the front one. 
and this is the front of it. Can you see where this says new historical characters? Yes. From 1999. <laughs> That's the year I graduated high school. We're now <laughs> historical characters in an American Girl doll. When I tell you I got my feelings hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That the nut they're doing throwbacks like there's like a Tamagotchi and like they're like oh they're grunge and glittery oh my god 1999 new historical characters sometimes I'll see some of these kids doing it's stuff they're like look at this I was like we did that like 20 years ago get out of here we already did that what do you think you came up with it I remember my mom saying that about like the 60s and 70s fashions when those mm -hmm. when the 60s style was really big when we were in high school or when I was in high school. That was like the cool thing to wear. And she was like, bell bottoms. Oh, my God. I never thought I'd see those again. I remember she was like disgusted mom. by it. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I always thought that the 80s would never come back. I was I was so sure of it. I was like, oh, for sure. Yeah. will never mm -hmm. come back. And now I think we would talk about it. I always still I wear scrunchy yep like acid yeah. wash jeans shit like that yep mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know it's a flashback that we haven't talked about what? well it's not a flashback because it's current but we grew up with them that's what? going on right now is um team selena gomez what have you not seen all the drama going are no. you serious no, I haven't. No, what's all right? Selena are you on Gomez, TikTok? She is. Are you on TikTok? Yes. I listen. I'm on Black TikTok, and I'm not doing anything to fuck that up. If I see if I see a video, I'm just like if they had Selena Gomez, I swiped out. I put not interested. I can't believe it's <laughs> I want like to stay on the everywhere. black side of TikTok. I feel like everybody's even talking about it. <laughs> no, what what happened? Now she's a. Is she a singer? She's a singer, right? Selena yeah, Gomez. she was a singer. Okay. That, remember, she dated J J T whatever forever ago. And Justin? there's been like the Selena Gomez like and Taylor Swift team against Kylie Jenner and uh, whatever. Wait, wait. Hailey, baby. Taylor Swift is involved in Kardashian drama. What? You just said Taylor Swift and mm -hmm. Jenner. I just can't believe you just said that to me, though. I'm sorry. That Taylor Swift <laughs> involved in Kardashian drama. Yeah. There's songs about it. Oh, no. I had no idea. I don't like Taylor Swift. Do you listen to Taylor Swift? No, I don't like Taylor Swift. Oh, you know that stage where she's like, that your tilted stage where she's in the bathtub full of diamonds? I have no idea what you're talking about right now. I oh feel like you're speaking God. another language. How do you not know all of this? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't follow Taylor Swift. Don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> all right, never mind. I thought you were going to come on here and definitely know what with the drama. Listen, was, I'm going to go... have a whole episode about Wu Tang. Okay, <laughs> this is not the same one. We're not in the same place right now. <laughs> <laughs> by the way the i bet everybody else is screaming okay, and knows sorry. exactly what i'm talking about okay go ahead tell me tell me what's going on with selena gomez let's start there well now that no you it, it's like a five-year history mil, no, actually 10 year history but they were just kylie jenner and justin Bieber's wife tried to shade her justin Bieber. Okay. they tried to shade selena gomez and like the internet came for them they okay. like lost hundreds of thousands of followers and Selena Gomez dethroned Kylie Jenner and got like 4 million new followers in like three days. Oh, wow. So she technically dethroned her on social media of being the most followed person. Why? Because somebody talked shit on her? Because they did, they did a passive aggressive dig at her oh. and they always do it. But okay. this time people got mad. Oh, wait, the Jenner did or the... the Jenners and Haley Beamer. Do they not like her? No. Oh. They don't. It's, it's always been them and then it's Selena and Taylor together. Maybe, maybe this is like, maybe this is like your generation stuff. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I guess because we do have like, yeah, we do fall in a little bit of a different... 
bracket mm-hmm. of music and stuff in the shows we watch. We're like a few yeah. years off from each other. Yeah. But still, I feel like everybody was talking about it. I knew about Kanye West coming on stage when Taylor won her thing. That's like that's, so like. Okay, that's remember. as far as I got with drama between them. With All right. associated drama with the Kardashians. So, well, so. Selena I'm just saying the the, this podcast is Team Selena Gomez. Okay. Okay. That's all you need to tell me. That's all I got to know. <laughs> as long as I don't have to be a Taylor Swift fan, I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm, we're here for, wait, is, are, are Swifty and Gomez friends? They're best friends. Oh, fuck. <laughs> all right. Okay, I love just, Taylor Swift. I feel like her music is fucking art. When she came back at the Kardashians and shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit. Like Some of the battle. shit. It's like, East yes, West it's, it, it's like every time it. somebody comes for her, she takes it and throws it right back in their face. This is like, this is like Tupac all over yeah. again. <laughs> Shug Knight. <laughs> I just can't believe you've never, I didn't know you didn't like Taylor. You didn't pay attention to her. No, no. But I mean, nothing against her. It's just not my jam. Like, I just don't like r- really. No, like, the Kardashians went after her. Folk songs. And then she like did a, that whole retribution video. She put her like number one song ever. Where you she's like what? dancing in go, front of her plane. I promise I will Google some cliff notes when we leave. Because now I'm interested. I'm like, well, Actually, well, what's the, the whole beef? like song video is like priceless. Because they literally... She suffered from PTSD because after Kanye West, everybody went after her on social media. Why'd and she like had her? to go through a bunch of te- she had to go through a bunch of therapy and shit. She disappeared from the internet for like a year. Who? Taylor Swift. Oh shit. That's and then she came back, and that's what that video. If you just watch the video, mm-hmm. it's hilarious because she literally crawls out from her grave. Oh. That's sad. And then she starts com- making fun of them. She makes digs at them as she sings in front of her private plane and holding up like seven Grammys. <laughs> yeah. It's like so petty good. I'm like, this is the best petty shit I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. I'm surprised you're Team Taylor because you like the Kardashians. No, I stopped watching the Kardashians after everything they did. Ah, uh-uh, really? Mm-hmm. I had no idea. See, you have to keep me informed of these decisions, okay? I have to know where I stand. <laughs> well, it's all Kanye's fault, but. Oh, okay. Well, it, like you said, the podcast is Team Selena. So <laughs> that's where we are right now. Um, I saw something the other day that was, um, it's it was so interesting. And I want to ta- I want you to tell me what you think. I'm going to set this up for you. This guy is a comedian, and this he asked this girl out on a date, and he said, would you go to a comedy show with me? And she says, okay. So she gets there. He's like, let's meet at the venue. When she gets there, he has the date set up on stage, and she is part of his routine. And she so does it now? She had no idea, but when she gets there, he does ask her permission. He's like, look. I have this set up for us to have a date. If you are cool with it, you're going to sit up here and the audience is going to watch. And this is a comedy show, but it's a performance piece as well. And if you're cool with it, we'll go with it. And he said later when he answered questions, because then she said, she said, okay. And they go through the whole thing. And I'll tell you about that in a second. But he did answer questions later where he said, yes, I did have a plan B. And she said, no. And he was like, and also she, I, I had a way for her to leave if she wasn't comfortable staying. Okay. So it was like, he did say that like at the end of it, but so it shows, would you agree to this? First of all, did you really just ask me that question? I know. I know. I shouldn't have done it. Okay. Actually, I, I don't, now. actually, I might, I like, I don't give a shit. I'm at that phase where I'm like, I don't give a shit. Okay, yeah. we're set up here. What are you gonna say? Go. <laughs> so, but it's like he wasn't he wasn't poking fun of her. Like she no. wasn't the joke. It was more like it was situational humor, and he was just like, "Hey, so how's it going?" And the audience kind of chuckled and stuff. And then he was like asking her questions, and she would answer, and he'd be like, 
how am I doing? Like he would turn to the audience and be like, hey, what do you think, guys? What do you think? She's great, right? (laughs) And so it was like so freaking cute. Mm -hmm. And so they go through the whole thing and he's like, he's like, should I? He turns to the audience and he's like, should I ask for a kiss? Do you think I want to get a kiss? And she's like, she kind of nods like, yeah, you know. So they end up, they had this really cute kiss at the end of it, of the performance or whatever. And then they start dating and then it says, and it posts, it was like five years later and he's, they're married and they have oh like kids goodness. and stuff. And it's like, it's, this is really beautiful thing. And he answers all these questions in the comments. And I saw the video. I was like, oh my God, this is so sweet. It's like, he's proposing to her. And he's like, number one, it took me a long time to propose because we were long distance for a while. Get off my back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause, but he said that he had ha- originally, he told his manager that he had this idea where he was just going to date girls on stage. And that mm-hmm. was going to be the thing. He was like, but I had, she was the first one I asked and I never dated anybody else. And he was like, and that was it. He said, I did the one performance. And he was like, my manager was like, there's no way you can top it. That was incredible. And he said, it was kind of like we were all just witnessing this perfect first date and two people yeah. falling in love. And after I was like, what? Cause at first I was like, oh, this is fucked up. This is going to be so embarrassing for her. And by the end of it, I was like, this is the most romantic thing ever. <laughs> you know, I'm like screaming at the video because it was so cute. Right. Yeah. I just loved it. I thought that was so sweet. So if somebody finds that video, share it in the read me romance group. Cause I want to watch it again. It was so cute. I need to I'd see like if to I see it. Too. it. Yeah, it was really sweet. Um, let's talk about Kateri and all her good stuff since we've run a little bit um, long on <laughs> getting started today. Um, let's see. The book she has for us today, like I mentioned earlier, is called Breaking the Beat. Um, I'll read the book bio for you. Every Friday night for the last few weeks, Alora Warrington has been thoroughly distracted at work. It's not a particularly difficult job making coffee at Wellsby's University campus coffee shop. That is until Phoenix Stone Stone starts performing there. His talent is undeniable, his good looks and easy smile disarming. Laura finds herself riveted in awe every time he is on stage. Phoenix loves his music and dreams of making a career out of it. Playing a rise and grind on Friday nights has the added benefits of being able to see Laura, the girl who lights him up and inspires his songs. Her kindness and beauty are effortless and radiate from within. It's hard to know what exactly makes her so attracted to him, but whatever it is, has him floored. He needs to find a way to claim her heart, body, and soul. Together, their passion lights a fire within them both, but an unexpected opportunity calls Phoenix away, and two pink lines change Alora's life forever. This story is a is a penalty series spinoff and features both heroines from Running Interference and Delay of Game. This is not your typical rock star secret baby romance, as it's 100% safe with no cheating. This high heat story features a hero that's obsessed with the woman he loves and will do whatever it takes to make her his, because for him, there's no going back. His heart is already hers. She just has to claim it. I love it. It's perfect. Perfect. 10 out of 10. Um, Breaking the Beat, like she said, is a spinoff of the Penalty series. It takes place in the same university and heroines from book one and two make an appearance in this short story you're about to listen to. Um, I just also want to mention this is like big do not forget. If you like what you're listening to and you're enjoying this story, make sure you grab the ebook or the print because there is a 5,000 word epilogue that's super spicy at the end. So it's going to be almost... It's like all that you're listening to today, you're going to hear it's yeah. like that much more added. So it's a lot extra. So make sure you grab the ebook and the print to get that. So um, for new releases, she has um, Running Interference is on Amazon right now. And excuse me, that's book one in the penalty series. Book two, Delay of Game, will be releasing on April 25th and is out for pre-order right now. Running Interference is an enemies to lovers college hockey romance and delay of game is a brother's best friend college hockey romance. Um, Make sure you check those out for her new releases. And she's also doing a $25 Amazon gift card giveaway this week. Um, If you want to find more from Kateri, you can follow her in her reader group on Facebook. It's called Kata, C-A-T-A, Readers, R-E-E. 
apostrophe D E R S, which is the cutest thing ever. So, and I know I mentioned earlier about her, um, the book signing she's doing in New Orleans. There's going to be all the links and everything down in the show notes. Mel's going to put everything in there. So you'll be able to find all the info. Since I know this is a lot, we throw at you right before we start the book. So I think that's it for now. Let's send them in. All right. See you guys on the other side. Bye. This is Breaking the Beat by Kata Ray. Read for you by Jarman Day. Chapter 1 Elora Music has the power to transport me. It can delve into my soul, take hold of my heart, and squeeze or alter my mood and emotions. A somber ballad can pull me down with it into a melancholy state of mind, while an upbeat, cheerful, dance-worthy number can blow my anxieties and worries away like clouds on a windy day. Currently, a sweet melody is coming from the man on stage as he gently strums the strings of his guitar, Phoenix Stone. From the moment he started performing at Rise and Grind Coffee House a few months ago, I've been entirely transfixed by him. His voice is like a warm blanket on a cold wintry night as he starts in on the first verse of an Imagine Dragon song. The sound runs over me, causing a wave of tingles from the top of my head to the tips of my toes, but it flows and pools between my legs. The effect he has on me is both embarrassing, as it keeps happening at work, and a heady rush. Something I worry I'm becoming addicted to. I mentally shake myself and get back to work. I walk from table to table, checking on customers, while also listening to him sing his heart out. After his second scheduled appearance, I did a little cyber-stalking and stumbled onto his YouTube channel. Phoenix Stone is beyond talented. His vocal range and the various tones and sounds he's capable of set him apart from most artists. But even more, there's just something about him that draws you in. He's magnetic. I must have sat in my dorm room for hours, just watching clip after clip. Him doing guitar solos, him singing while cooking, him singing by a bonfire. And from the views and followers on his account, it looks like I'm not the only one watching. As I turn around, my gaze automatically jumps back to him, his confidence and total ease on stage set me on fire. Today he's wearing a tight-fitting black t-shirt that highlights his biceps and forearms and jeans that hug his ass perfectly. The shoulder strap of his guitar is long, making his instrument rest in front of his pelvis. Each time he hits certain chords, his hips thrust forward to the beat. What I wouldn't give to be that guitar. I want him to lay his hands on me, to play me like his instrument, and to pull forth an orgasmic symphony of sounds. As if feeling my eyes on him, he moves his gaze to meet mine. I'm suddenly rooted to the spot, tray in hand. Just like every time before, he doesn't avert his eyes. They're an intense bluish green that seems to dive into the deepest parts of me, making me feel like I'm the only one in the room. As his song comes to an end, his lips curl up in one corner. A small smirk, just for me, followed by a well-timed wink. If anyone were to look my way, all they'd find is a puddle on the floor. Thank you, everybody, he says, followed by a small wave as the crowd erupts with the sound of clapping. That's my cue to move from this spot and get back behind the counter. Now that the performance is done, there will be a new wave of orders to fill. Hey, Elora, says a chipper voice from the other side of the counter. It's Jamie. She's been coming here since the first week she started at Wellsby University. She's fun, quirky, and energetic. She's like a ray of sunshine and brings that energy with her everywhere she goes. Hey, Jamie, the usual? I ask, giving her a wide smile. You know it. She tilts her head in the direction of the stage. Lover boy approaching, she whispers, giggling. She figured out my attraction to Phoenix the first time she came in and witnessed me babbling like an idiot at him. Stop calling him that. I whisper yell at my friend as I fix her cappuccino. First goes the espresso, then the milk and the foam from the frothed milk before I place it in front of her. Stop calling who what? Comes Phoenix's amused voice from next to Jamie. Well, now she's gone and done it. A nervous feeling takes over my insides as he leans in over the counter, getting much, much closer. How am I going to get out of this one? Jamie swats at his shoulder, laughing. Amazing, said again, Phoenix. To be honest, I don't know why you haven't gotten some kind of recording deal yet. And to answer your question, 
We are both having boy problems, so we were discussing that, she says, winking at me. Boy problems? He ponders, rubbing the stubble on his chin, then turns towards me. I didn't think you had a boyfriend, Elora. Before I could respond, Jamie, in her outgoing way, jumps into the conversation again. She doesn't, and that's the problem, Phoenix. Oh, dear God. At this point, if the ground under me split open and swallows me whole, I'd be forever grateful. Let's not bore him with my lack of a love life, Jamie. I scold her. He turns to me one more time. Is there a prospect of a boyfriend? His bright blue-green eyes shine playfully. Well, maybe. I'm not sure yet. I awkwardly get out. I smile and avert my eyes. My cheeks burn from the words I left unspoken. Turning towards the customers who are waiting at the other end of the counter, I take their orders and start making their drinks. Jamie and Phoenix move to a nearby table. While I work, I listen to them talk about his social media presence and how she can make it bigger for him. People come and go. Phoenix moves to an empty table when Liza, Jamie's brother's girlfriend, takes his place in the chair he vacated. The last half hour before closing time goes fast. I tidy up while listening to Liza and Jamie discuss boy problems. Connie, Jamie's longtime crush, has firmly put her in the friend zone, mainly due to her big brother being his best friend and teammate. My feet hurt, I mumble to myself, a bit louder than I realize. They both turn towards me, all boy problems fast forgotten. Jamie grins with a mischievous glint in their eyes and opens her mouth to say something. Before she can utter a sound, Liza whispers, Maybe you should tell that to lover boy. She cocks an eyebrow and motions with her chin to where Phoenix is sitting, writing something in a notebook. I bet you want to be that pen right about now. Jamie teases, making us both giggle. All right, that's enough teasing. We are officially closed now. I'll see you both back at the dorms later on. I say in my not-so-subtle attempt at getting them out the door. Now that the only people left are Jamie, Liza, Phoenix, and me. They look around and then turn to me with mischievous grins and nod in unison. Later, Elora, they practically shout before going out the door. At this rate, those girls are going to give me a heart attack from embarrassment. What with the near-constant blush I'm sporting. It's unlike me to be so rattled by a guy. I'm usually confident and straightforward. Phoenix has me flustered and sputtering like a high school freshman. Looking up from his writing, Phoenix notices we're the only ones left. Hey, you want help cleaning up? Um, sure. I'm not going to turn down a chance to spend more time in his presence. I'm fairly sure he feels something for me, too. After his second performance, he started to come into rise and grind during the day. Every time, he made sure to wink, touch my hand, or make us both laugh by quoting cheesy song lyrics. Coming around the counter, I start to clear the tables of dishes. Phoenix comes near me, brushing his arm against mine, making us both turn at the same time. Our faces are so close, we share a breath. The way he looks at my lips, I think he's going to kiss me. Instead, he snaps back to awareness and moves his face away, leaving me dizzy with need. So, there's someone, is there? He teases, grabbing a loose piece of hair off my face and twirling it between his fingers. Well, that depends, I say, staring right back at him. He quirks an eyebrow, never breaking eye contact, and a little smirk works its way onto his face. Depends on what, Elora? The way he says my name, hard on the E and rolling the R a little, giving it the right amount of rasp and makes me shiver. Depends on... I manage to get out, even though my throat is unbelievably dry. On, he prompts. His head dips closer as he searches my eyes for the answer he already knows. You, I breathe out, under the spell of his beautiful, soulful stare. This time when he smiles, it's genuine and runs from ear to ear, lighting up his face. Elora, would you let me take you out for a late night snack? There's a mom and pop type pizza joint just off campus, and it's still open. I love pizza. My stomach gurgles its agreement, making us both chuckle. Come on, let's finish up here, and we'll go get you fed, beautiful Elora. A childlike giddiness fills me at hearing him call me beautiful, and I nod my agreement, getting back to clearing tables. Chapter 2 Phoenix I've wanted Elora Warrington since the first moment I saw her all those months ago. 
and now she's finally mine to cherish. Three weeks ago at Rise and Grind, when I first asked her out, and after our pizza date, we've been practically inseparable. My feelings for her have only grown since then. I'd almost call it an obsession. I want her with a fierceness that burns within me and threatens to consume me. No matter if she's with me or not, she occupies my every waking thought. At night, she stars in my sweetest of dreams and my dirtiest of fantasies. This woman, with her quirky, fun nature and her bubbly personality, has tattooed herself on every surface within me. I love her, and it both excites and scares the shit out of me. I need to focus, so I quickly open up my Facebook Live and grab my guitar. Sitting on my dorm room bed, I randomly strum a few chords. Closing my eyes, I let go and just play whatever comes. It's not long before a melody takes shape. What comes out is a bit sweet on the surface, but has a bit of an edginess to it, too. I like it. It sounds just like Elora. That thought makes me smile and chuckle to myself. She has become my muse. I rest the guitar in my lap and grab my notebook, getting down everything I just played. I play over where I left off, and it's as if the floodgates have opened up. The more I strum, the more notes pour out of me and onto the pages. I'm lost in my own creative zone for a while. Starting to come back to reality, I hear alert after alert chime from my laptop. As I played, hearts, likes, and comments filled my screen. Taking a closer look, I realize I'm not just playing to my few loyal followers, but to a few thousand strangers all commenting at once. Wow, what is this song called? Where can I get this? What a hauntingly beautiful sound. Can you sing it for us? Such a sweet song. I want more. I play the melody over again from start to finish, wanting to hear it all together. By the time I'm done, my lips are lifted at the corners, and I'm proud of what I just made. More comments have been added to the feed, but my eyes are drawn to one. It's a familiar handle I've come to know well. Elora19 has added a cheeky comment of her own. Your guitar plus my room equals sweet music tonight. Followed by a shy smile emoji and monkey covering its eyes in embarrassment. My smile widens as I've gotten the less than subtle hint. Thanks, you guys. This is something I just wrote while you watched, so it's brand new. I put the guitar down and take a sip from my glass of water. Rubbing my chin, I say, I think I'm going to call this one My Sweet Elora. My screen goes off with a flood of hearts, likes, and other emoji flying everywhere as my followers react. I spend a few minutes randomly strumming and answering a few questions. I've been keeping an eye on the time. I better get ready for my date. Tonight I'm taking Elora out to a drive-in movie. We both live on campus and have kept most of our dates close by, but this time we decide to do something a little different. During one of our conversations, she mentioned having never been to a drive-in movie, only traditional indoor theaters, so we're taking advantage of the recent warmer weather and heading there tonight. I'm not her first for everything, but for the stuff she's yet to experience, I want to be there. I want to watch her excitement bubble up and see the joy in her eyes at trying new things. As time gets closer, I wish my followers a great evening and sign off. It's time to shower, get dressed, and go pick up my girl. Elora The melody you played tonight was wonderful. I gush as Phoenix backs into a spot in the back row of the drive-in. The huge parking lot is surrounded by trees and tall bushes, preventing unpaid viewers from seeing through. A giant projector screen reaches high into the air at the other end of the lot. It's easy to see from anywhere with it being about four times the size of a regular theater screen. Already there are about 50 vehicles parked and there's room for at least twice that still. Oh, uh, thanks. He smiles and looks a little embarrassed. You inspired it, you know. I grin and giggle, feeling my face heat up. Yeah, you said that on Facebook Live to a couple thousand people. I was there, remember? If sarcasm was a sport, I'd win the championship. Admissions of affection tend to make me squirmy, but in the best possible ways. I also have no clue how to respond, other than with a comically sarcastic remark. Chuckling, Phoenix reaches over and pulls me to him before kissing the top of my head. I relax and curl into his side. The side of my face is pressed into him and, wow, does he ever smell good. He's all woodsy, fresh, and something so masculine. It must be his natural smell, but it's making me want to lick him from head to toe. 
Come on, sweet girl, he says after he gives me a quick kiss on the lips. It's barely more than a small peck, but it travels all the way to my core. While he's getting out, I pause to take a deep breath. I need to clear my head of this unrelenting lust. He's put a lot of thought into this date, and I don't want to derail us from enjoying what he's got planned. The temptation to mount him right here in this truck is strong, but instead I follow his lead and get out. He rounds the back of his truck since it faces the screen and climbs into the bed before reaching a hand back down to me. I grab a hold and am pulled up and into his arms. The Cheshire cat grin he's displaying tells me that my landing spot was completely planned. Not that I'm complaining. He's got everything set up that we could need. There are large cushions laid out for sitting on, big bags of pre-made popcorn, our favorite kinds of candies, a cooler full of sodas and bottled water, plus a very warm and cozy-looking blanket. I take it all in. My heart somersaults at the sweetly hopeful and excited look he gives me. Wow, I breathe out. I've never had anyone make such an effort for me before. I'm so grateful and slightly overwhelmed that I'm almost speechless. Hey, are you all right? He asks, looking a little worried. I nod, unable to speak yet. Phoenix sits down with his back to the cab, and I move to settle in between his legs, my back against his chest. His arms come up and surround me, cocooning me in his warmth and making me feel safe. I listen to his strong heartbeat against my ear as I gather myself again. This is just perfect. I get out more easily this time. I was just a bit overwhelmed by it all. I feel his heartbeat change its rhythm. Having someone go to such lengths, taking the time to do all this, even paying attention to the kinds of candy and soda I like, I... Well, no one has ever done that for me before. His lips rest on my shoulder as he says, My sweet Elora, you deserve the best of everything. Tonight, though, you'll have to make do with a rerun of Sleepless in Seattle. He pulls the blanket over our laps and wraps his arms around me, hands meeting at the bottom of my ribcage. We settle in comfortably as the movie starts. I try to pay attention, I swear I do, but all I can concentrate on is how close his hands are to the underside of my breasts. I'm distracted by how much I want him to touch them. I wiggle and shift back further into him, making his hands move slightly higher. His index finger grazes my breast, making me take a sharp breath in. As I do, Phoenix lets a small groan leave his lips. I tilt my hips forward slightly, arching my butt back just enough to feel his growing length press against me. Having him there, feeling his shaft grow bigger and bigger while pushed against me, makes my insides clench and weep to have him exactly where I need him. He clears his throat. <sighs> Elora, I... I cut him off. Shh. I slowly run my hand up the inside of his muscled thigh, all the way up, and slip it in behind me and between his legs. I cup his balls over his shorts and give them a slight squeeze before starting to rub up and down his length. Phoenix's breath quickens as he bends and kisses up my neck while his hands find their way under my shirt and bra. I love the feeling of his hands cupping and massaging both sides at once. The calluses on each fingertip add to the sensations as they move over my breasts and tease my nipples. Their roughness feels extraordinary as they circle my sensitive tips before pinching them. It's electrifying, sending a pulsing current straight from my teased nipples right through me, down between my legs, and to my very stimulated clit. I let out a small whimper and turn my head. Our lips meet in a heated kiss, one that's filled with need and passion. His tongue makes its way into my mouth, exploring, tasting, claiming every inch as his. I can hardly stand my desperation. I want and need so much more of him. Still stroking him, I take the opportunity to undo his pants and pull him out. His thick cock is warm, hard, and long in my hand. I'm grateful we're parked in the back and hidden under the blanket, but even if we weren't, I'm not sure I'd care at this point. My need rages higher and higher the longer we go on. Our arousal is fueled by our own pleasure as much as by the effect we each have on the other. I keep on stroking him as he continues to tease my tits. I'm so lost in the pleasure that at some point, and I'm not sure when, I slipped my other hand behind me to join the first. I've kept stroking with my one hand on his cock, using the other to massage his balls. He must like it, as he's been leaking pre-cum ever since. 
I use it to add to the glide of my hand up and down his length. Each slide makes him whisper a moan into my ear. His sounds make my pussy so wet for him. I can feel the tightening of his balls start when he lets out a shaky breath. Hey, Laura, you have to stop. I'm too close to coming. And when I do, your hand is not where I want to be. I'll want to be buried balls deep inside of you. And not before first making your pussy dripping wet for me and having your tight little cunt ripple and squeeze around my length. His words draw a moan out of me. Yes, baby, I need that too. Before either of us has a chance to think better of it, I make a decision. I know what I want. I lift up slightly and quickly remove my panties from under my skirt, then move one knee to each side of him, still facing the screen, and back up over his lap. The length of him glides between my folds, my juices adding to his and coating him even more. When the head peeks out the front of me, I use my fingers to press his tip against my clit. It feels so damn good that I slide and ride against it a few more times. Needing more, I hold his cock head and lean forward until he's notched right where I want him. Leaning back up and sinking down, I take him in to the hilt all at once. Phoenix's breath rushes out as he grips my hips hard. There's a long pause before he gasps for a new breath. I take the opportunity to lift up and sink down a few times, making sure his cock is completely drenched in my wetness. Spreading my legs wider, I sit fully down on his lap and rest my weight on him. His entire length is buried deep within me. I'm completely impaled on his hard cock. He's so thick and long. I didn't know I could take him all in like this. I feel so stretched and full. It's hovering on the brink of being too much, but it's exactly right, too. It's so damn good that I'm panting with the overwhelming desperation and primal need I have to be fucked hard. It's taking everything I have in me to stay still and not ride him as hard as I can. Oh, fuck. He groans into my shoulder as quietly as possible. Gently sucking on my skin and spreading open mouth kisses on my shoulder, he says, Fuck, baby. You feel so good around me. Whimpering, I move my hips back and forth, trying to get that sweet friction I so badly need. I circle my hips around and around while still fully impaled, not getting any movement or friction at the base, but loving the movement of him deep inside. The risk of getting caught and the way he fills me has me closer to the edge than I would have thought possible. Grabbing my hips harder, he stops my movements. Baby, you feel so good, but we need to stop. I didn't bring any condoms. It's, it's okay, I say shakily. I get the shot. He nods and relaxes his grip. Again, with as little movement as possible, I go back to grinding my hips. He moves one arm and secures it around the front of my shoulders, pulling me back into his chest and holding me tightly to him so I'm pinned there. Then I feel his other hand slide over my thigh and reach between my legs. He whispers in my ear, Spread your legs as wide as you can, baby. Expose that clit as much as you can. I can tell it's desperate for some attention. I do as he says, opening wide. Taking his middle finger, he touches where we're joined, running his finger along that seam between us. My tightly stretched opening spreads wide around his hard girth. <sighs> Feeling us joined right here is so erotic. I can feel just how well I fill you. You've taken every last millimeter of me. On this end, you're tied up against my balls, and on the other end, I can feel my tip notched right up to your cervix. You are completely full, and I'm an exact fit. It's like your hot, juicy little pussy was made to have my cock buried in it. His words turn me on even more. Taking his finger, he gathers some wetness and circles around the outside of my clit, not actually touching it. It drives me crazy. I want him to touch me where I need it. Moving his hand down again, he grabs a hold of his balls. Lifting them up, he circles his fingers around the skin, forcing them together and tightening the skin around them. He pushes them into my clit and circles them around. It feels amazing. His mouth comes back to my ear. Grind yourself against my balls. Rub your clit all over them. Use them to make yourself come on my cock. It feels so euphoric that I get lost in the sensations. Before long, both of our breathing becomes erratic. 
My hands find their way to his thighs, my fingers digging in as my head falls back onto his shoulder. I can feel how close you are. You're clenched so tight around me that I know when you go off, you're going to take me with you. But we've got to stay quiet, he whispers. You think you can do that for me, baby? Can you come all over my cock and not make a sound? I nod back my understanding. Good girl, just like that. Ride my cock and balls. He groans quietly, his breaths as shaky with the need for release as my own. I grind on him more as he continues to hold his balls to my clit. It's driving me insane with the need to scream his name. I want to feel you detonate around me and squeeze me tight while I'm buried all the way in you. He growls. Suddenly, he starts to move under me. He thrusts up slightly. It's a subtle movement, but it's like he's trying to make sure every millimeter of him is inside me. It's enough to cause my insides to flutter. Feeling it, Phoenix drops his balls and presses my clit between his fingers. He traps my clit and pinches it enough to set me off. I see spots and am blinded as my orgasm rips through me. My entire body convulses, and my mouth opens in a silent scream before I bite my fist to keep myself silent. As he said, my orgasm triggers his own. With his arms wrapped around me, he pulls me down on him hard, biting my shoulder to keep himself quiet. We stay seated, wrapped in each other, while calming down from our high. Turning slightly towards him, I kiss him passionately before moving my mouth towards his ear. I want to keep you buried inside me like this. It feels too good having you there. Let's see how many times we can come before the movie finishes, I whisper. He sends a deep throaty chuckle into my hair, sending goose pumps all over me. I like the way you think. Good thing tonight's a double feature. Chapter 3 Elora. Monday morning, I walk into Rise and Grind with a permanent grin on my face. All throughout the weekend, I haven't been able to stop thinking about Friday night and replaying all the dirty bits in my head over and over again. The way he felt deep inside me, the rasp of his voice each time he made me come, and the feel of his release brought on by mine. Just thinking about it now has my face heating up in a full on blush. A full-body shiver runs from my head, across my neck and shoulders, down my spine, and circles around my core before passing down my thighs and making me weak in the knees. I pause for a second to gather my wits since, apparently, I need it. I get back to starting up a fresh carafe of drip coffee in the machine, humming and swaying to the tune playing over the speakers. What's got you so giddy this morning, Elora? says the familiar teasing voice of Jamie from across the counter. For a barista, you're, oddly enough, generally not a morning person. She's not wrong. I have to have at least one cup of coffee in me before becoming a decent human being. Shrugging, I fill my cup with the remnants of the last carafe before taking it to the sink. The small reprieve from answering doesn't help me think of a better answer. Uh, nothing. I try to smile convincingly. Whatever she notices causes her eyes to widen and her mouth to form a huge, toothy smile. She lifts her perfectly manicured finger and points at me accusingly. You're lying, Elora, and I want the truth. I giggle as I fix up my cup and take a sip. The delicious brew travels down my throat, leaving a trail of contented happiness inside me. Trying to deflect, I lift my shoulders nonchalantly and mutter, I don't know what you're talking about. Elora, she chides, tapping her nails on the counter in exasperation as she waits for me to explain. I just continue to smile at her before turning my attention to the new customers waiting to order. Good morning, what can I get for you? I can hear Jamie huff and know she's rolling her eyes at me. Soon enough, I hand over some drip coffees, to go, and a small bag with creamers, sugars, and sweetener. Plenty of study groups need their fix while cramming. Now, she says, trying to sound all bossy and stern. But it's kind of like an adorable kitten trying to be tough. It's too cute to take seriously. As I walk from one end of the counter to the other, she follows. Elora, come on, tell me, she whines. Okay, fine. I chuckle lightly and turn towards her. Before I get the chance, the door chimes. I don't have to look to know who enters. My entire body flares to attention, and my most delicate parts start to tingle with need. Jamie turns toward the door and watches as Phoenix heads straight towards me. He has a giant smile plastered across his face, 
one I can't help but smile back at. Looking at him, I can also see a little knowing glint in his eyes. Jamie turns from Phoenix to me, then back again before whisper shouting, Oh my god, you guys got down and dirty. Oh, and not just once either. You went at it like a couple of rabbits. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't take long. She raises her eyebrows and smirks before pointing to me. You are practically glowing, plus you're humming and dancing around. Then she points at Phoenix. And you? Just strode in here like a man on a mission straight towards Elora with eyes sparkling with mischief. Before either of us can answer, she adds, Oh, and don't bother trying to either lie, dodge the question, feign nonchalance, or otherwise pretend I'm crazy and don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're right. Phoenix and I admit at the same time, trying not to choke on our laughter. Jamie looks at both of us again, another smile forming. Good for you guys. I'll leave you be now she says, pointing to a nearby table before she leaves us. Taking my break, I come around the counter to meet him. I step into Phoenix's warm embrace, and our arms immediately wrap around each other. He's nearly a head taller than me, so when he holds me, my head nestles perfectly into his chest. It makes me feel safe and cared for. Good morning, my sweet Elora, he says, bending to kiss the top of my head. Good morning, Phoenix, I smile back up at him. He squeezes me tightly for a second before pushing me out to arm's length. You'll never guess what just happened. I'm so excited I can barely breathe. I almost forgot to put shoes on in my rush to come tell you. Laughing, I look down at his feet. I shake my head and smile at seeing his mismatched socks, but his shoes are definitely there. What happened? Tell me. I guide him towards the tall chairs at the coffee bar before I go and grab him a cup of coffee. Hey, Laura, it's finally happening. The excitement in his voice is contagious. The anticipation is killing me. Are you going to tell me or just leave me in suspense? I say, thrilled by his childlike glee. He takes a deep breath to steady himself before his Cheshire cat grin comes back out to play. Okay, so I just got off the phone with Club Chase in L.A. They're super famous in the industry for launching the careers of new talent. I'm at the edge of my seat, legs shaking under the table, fingers twisting together as I wait for him to say the words and not knowing exactly what they're going to be, I smile to urge him on. They saw my online content from Friday. They've had a last-minute cancellation for their huge 4th of July lineup, and they want me to fill the spot. His eyes grow to cartoon-like size as he blurts out his words. He radiates his excitement and happiness with each passing second. Phoenix! I squeal. That, that's huge! Wow, what an amazing opportunity! His face falls a bit. But the only thing is, I have to leave right away. They want all the solo artists to practice on their stage, get used to the house band, and decide on all the sound system levels. They said it's even more important for new artists like me, so that I can get all my nerves worked out ahead of time. Phoenix, I'm so excited for you. L.A. is going to fall in love with you just like... I take a quick inhale and look down as panic fills me. I can't believe what I almost blurted out. Raising my chin with his finger... He forces me to meet his gaze, and what I find there settles my anxiety almost instantly. His eyes echo back at me a deep understanding and all the emotions I'm not ready to say out loud. I know he feels what I feel. A smile blooms across his face. It's not showy or exaggerated, it's calm and knowing and real. With a lot of unspoken promises hidden just beneath the surface, he says, I won't be gone for long. I'm already looking forward to our next date when I get back. It should only be a couple of weeks. Me too, I say, reaching for his hands and holding them in mine. He lifts one of my hands and turns it before placing a gentle kiss over the pulse point of my wrist. Far too soon, my break is over, and Phoenix has to go pack before heading to the airport. Holding me tight in his arms, we sink into a kiss that falls just past the line of being appropriate for public, but neither of us cares. His tongue makes love to mine as I melt against him, but all too soon we pull apart. Phoenix quickly pecks another kiss to the top of my head and lets me go. I'll see you soon, my beautiful, sweet Elora, he says while walking backward towards the door. With one last bright smile, he leaves.
Welcome back. Hey, welcome back, lady listeners. Um, join us back here on Thursday for the second installment of Breaking the Beat by Cattery. And like I said earlier, make sure you grab the ebook for this. It's up now um, to get an extra 5,000 word epilogue if you don't want to wait. Um, well, it's only in the ebook, but if you don't want to wait for the second half, you can grab the book now. And don't forget to enter this week's giveaway for a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card. And all the other good stuff will be in the show notes. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind. And read me